Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're going to be talking about the signs and symptoms of zinc deficiency. If you don't know what zinc is, it is an essential trace mineral, meaning an essential, by the way, meaning required for life. You cannot sustain life without zinc. In fact, plants and animals both need this. And zinc deficiency is actually incredibly common. In fact, globally, when we look at the entire world, as many as one third or about 30% or so of people have zinc deficiency. But that's talking about overt zinc deficiency. If you live in some place like the United States or another established country, the chances that you'll have gross zinc deficiency is very unlikely or very uncommon, at least not to the point where your zinc is so low that you're in a life-threatening situation. But people in these countries still do suffer from suboptimal zinc levels. So if your zinc level is lower than it should be, you may suffer from many of the signs and symptoms we're going to be talking about. Again, you're probably not going to ever be in a situation where your zinc is so low that it's going to be life-threatening unless you have some, uh, you know, some very rare diseases. But these symptoms that we're about to talk about are quite common and they, are, they may be signs that you need to change or add supplements to your, to your regimen or to adjust your diet to get more zinc, etc. So if you don't know me, I'm Dr. Childs. I'm an internist and I specialize in helping people with thyroid problems, helping people with hormone imbalances, and of course, helping people lose weight as well. But today we're talking about zinc. And zinc fits in here because, well, first of all, we'll talk about zinc and its impact on thyroid function, which is really important, something that you should know. But zinc is also just important for overall general good health. It's something that you should be aware of. So these signs and symptoms, again, are signs and symptoms of early or suboptimal zinc levels. They're not the life-threatening sort of symptoms that you can experience if your zinc is so low that it's basically depleted. But these are the kind of symptoms you'll have if you're just not quite getting enough, you know, feeling a little run down. And we'll talk about some of these signs and symptoms. But that's really where we're at, so I want to make that clear. So one of the first and most common symptoms would be an impaired immune function. So impaired immune function means that your immune system is simply not working as well as it should be, or it's not as strong as it should be. So these people tend to get sick all the time. Okay, so if you're somebody who, every time you run into somebody who is sick, you tend to get whatever illness that they have, and this is happening multiple times a year, right? Or if you feel like you're getting the flu every single year, or, or whatever it is, right? If you feel like you're running into people and getting that illness, and your immune system just doesn't seem to be as robust as it once was, that potentially is a sign of zinc deficiency. Now, there are other causes of immune deficiency, including some rare disorders. We're not talking about those. But again, this is more the, the suboptimal area. But your immune system should be strong enough to withstand or at least help you fight um, many infections, right? You will get sick eventually. You're not going to be you know, impervious to all diseases, but you shouldn't get every single one that you come in contact with. And also, you can also, and by the way, another way to look at this is, are you getting sick longer than other people who have had the same illness? So if something goes, goes around in your family and let's say everyone in your family has it for two days, but you have it for five days, that's a sign that your immune system probably isn't as strong as it should be. It's not able to kill it off as fast as other people's. So that's one warning sign. Another would be hair loss. So zinc is very important for the production of hair. Your health, hair follicles need it to be able to produce enough hair. So any sort of changes to your hair loss um, or an increase in hair fall, um, you might see um, dry hair or changes to the hair texture, anything related to, to an increase in hair loss or a change in hair texture or concentration may be related to uh, zinc deficiency. Another one would be skin problems. So I hope you're seeing sort of the trend here. Um, hair and skin kind of go together. That's why you see a lot of people who have who take hair, skin, and nail supplements because a lot of the same nutrients that your skin needs, your hair follicles are part of the skin, so they also need those as well. Now, zinc, early zinc deficiency can cause skin problems, but usually in the form of acne, usually which is cystic, by the way, and or rashes. So if you have unexplained rashes or you just find that you're really sensitive to things that maybe you weren't sensitive to previously, um, detergents or soaps or things like that, you know, things that wouldn't have given you a rash 10 years ago, but now all of a sudden they are, that may be a sign that your skin's a little bit too sensitive and potentially, you know, one of the causes of that could be zinc deficiency. And again, acne, this is one of the reasons that a lot of, uh, if you go online, you look for natural treatments for acne, you'll see zinc as a potential treatment for it. Now, zinc also has impact on other hormones. So that's part of the reason why it can be used, especially in PCOS and things like that. Um, but having not enough zinc in your body can cause acne directly as well. So there's maybe two reasons to use zinc if you have acne. The next one would be fatigue. So do you feel like um, you're a little more run down than usual? Do you feel like you don't have the amount of energy that you used to? Um, or do you feel like even after a great night's sleep that you don't pop out of bed ready to you know tackle the day? Those are all signs that your energy is probably a little bit low. And fatigue, by the way, is a very nonspecific symptom. Lots of things can cause fatigue, including thyroid problems, including adrenal problems, you know, you name it. Many, many, many things can cause fatigue. But one of the symptoms of zinc deficiency can be fatigue. 
Now, I wouldn't go by fatigue by itself, but if you also have these other problems, so let's say you have impaired immune functions, so you're getting sick all the time, you're having a little bit of hair loss, you're like, where's that coming from? And also your fatigue, that, you know, you can put the picture together as you get more and more of these symptoms. Next would be mild to moderate thyroid problems. So specifically here, we're talking about um, inflammatory conditions which can cause thyroid problems, so things like Graves' disease, things like Hashimoto's, or mild um, thyroid problems such as low T3, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Zinc is really important for thyroid function. Now, your body needs zinc to convert or activate thyroid function, T4 into T3. So we're not going to get really into that. We could do a video all by itself on that topic, but just know that your thyroid does need zinc to function optimally. And there are many people, if you have just not, you know, slight, you know, let's say 10% deficiency in zinc in your body, um, but you still have 90% there, that 10% may be enough to impact your thyroid and cause a lot of these other symptoms. So do pay attention to that. Look at your thyroid. Um, and, and again, if you, even if you have thyroid problems, you still may need to have zinc. So zinc may, may be one of the, the potential solutions to fixing an early thyroid problem. So be aware of that as well. Zinc deficiency can cause decreased appetite. This is one of the later signs. So most people who have it, um, I would say this isn't necessarily a common one, but I do want to include it in there to be complete. Um, going back off from what we talked about previously, this one ties into the thyroid problems. So low T3, T3 is the most important thyroid hormone in your body. In fact, it's the, it's the strongest, it's the most active. So people who have a zinc problem, they aren't able to make enough T3 because they can't convert it. And therefore they do end up with low T3 on lab tests. So you can actually check, check your labs and look for free T3. Now, it's unlikely that your doctor will order this. You may have to ask them to order it, but you can look at this. So if your free T3 levels are low and all of the thyroid tests are, you know, at least somewhat normal, that's a, that's a kind of a, a discouraging sign. It may be an indication that it's zinc or selenium. These micronutrients all sort of play together. Um, so you have to be aware of that. There could be crossover in terms of symptoms. For instance, selenium deficiency can cause hair loss as well and so on. But um, you do want to pay attention to all these things. And if you have a deficiency in one, it's likely to have a deficiency in other, just FYI. But again, that low T3 is important because it impacts the thyroid, as I mentioned previously. Another interesting thing is that zinc deficiency, at least early zinc deficiency, can increase your risk of developing multiple food allergies or food sensitivities. So if you've ever, have you ever had a um, delayed IgG food sensitivity test in which it shows you allergic to all types of foods, you know, rice, beans, sweet potatoes, strawberries, all these things, that may not be that you're truly allergic to those things, but that your body is in a state of sensi it's, a, it's in a state of heightened sensitivity. So your body is becoming sensitive to those things, but that's not because you're truly sensitive to them. So I hope that made sense. But if you fix this problem, if you fix, let's say zinc is causing it, then you might not truly be sensitive to those things. You take your zinc and then you can actually consume those foods later, especially if you're reducing you know, inflammation in your gut at the same time. But just be aware that low levels of zinc can increase your risk of developing food allergies and food sensitivities, even to healthy foods. So be aware of that. And then the last one here, I'll make sure you can see this, would be intestinal issues. So mainly it can increase your risk of developing things like le leaky gut, but a very predominant symptom is diarrhea or loose stools. So let's not even say diarrhea, let's just say loose stools because it can exist on a spectrum. So if you have sort of you know, loose stools when you otherwise wouldn't, that may be indicative that you have zinc deficiency or at least suboptimal zinc levels in your body. Uh, again, a lot of other things can cause diarrhea and intestinal issues. So you sort of have to look at this as a package together. And if you start looking at these symptoms and saying, well, you know, yes, I get sick all the time. Um, I do have some unexplained acne that just popped out of nowhere when I was an adult. I do feel a little run down all, um, sometimes. Um, I think I have a thyroid problem, but I'm not quite sure. But I go to the doctor and they say that they don't look right. You know, now we're starting to paint a picture that may explain where these symptoms are coming from. And that may be zinc. Now, the next question might be, how do you test for it? Well, testing for zinc is not super accurate. So in most cases, in fact, the studies that I look at, and this, I, I think this is true when you look at people clinically, it's far better to just take zinc as a supplement than it is to test for zinc deficiency in the blood. Because it's very possible that you could get a zinc level that comes back in the blood, that comes back as normal, but still experience these symptoms and still benefit from the use of over-the-counter zinc. So almost always, and by the way, taking a zinc supplement tends to be cheaper than testing for the deficiency itself. And it's, there's no harm in taking extra zinc. So it tends to be better to just take the zinc than it is to test for the zinc. Um, so that's, that's my opinion. That's how I treat patients and they tend to work really well. But I want to know, have, do you have any of these symptoms on this list? Do you think that you have zinc deficiency? Have you had your zinc levels tested? Um, let me know in the comments below because I, I'd like to know, um, how, you know what symptoms you're experiencing. Um, and that's all I have for you guys today. And otherwise, I will see you in the next one.